Hello, welcome to Q and Amico. I'm Kara, as you probably know, and I'm having a little technical difficulty this morning, so you may be seeing my stream, but I may not be able to find questions. So let us see. Um, welcome to the new year and a new Q and Amico. So this program is for me to answer your questions. And at the same time, I'm just going to be doing things that I would be doing, glazing. And um, still trying to find my question feed. Hang on. Sorry. We're There we go. All right. So I've got questions. Yay. Heather is asking, what's a good bright low fire glaze? And uh, by bright, I assume you mean glossy and a bright color. Uh, and it depends on what you really want out of your low fire glazes. Uh, I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm going to go to uh, showing you what I'm working on today is um, these are bookends, vase bookends, so you can put flowers in your vase, in, in your bookends. Um, so for low fire glazing, uh, my favorites for bright opaque colors are the TP, Teacher's Palette line. Right, you're going to get some weird noises while my brush goes down all the way to the bottom of my pot. I was going to pour, but then I uh, didn't have a glaze that was the right consistency. So uh, teacher's palette glazes are opaque and bright colors for 05, cone 05. For uh, more translucent variety, we have the LG low fire glazes, low fire gloss glazes, and they come in a variety of colors. And they're very, very, some of them are very, very bright, some of them are more subtle. I know this is kind of a weird thing to watch. So, hi, Heather. Uh, Allison asks about Art Deco Green. Any glaze combos? The glaze seems matte. It is kind of matte. It's sort of a semi-matte. It does get kind of a crystally surface, depending on how it's applied and used. Uh, I like it over the celadons, but it, it just makes kind of a, a opaque, minty color over the celadons. Uh, but that's really my favorite use of Art Deco Green is with Celadons. Otherwise, it's, it's not generally one of the most exciting layering glazes. Uh, Sandra asked, what is the key to getting clear satin matte to not go shiny? So um, uh, actually, that is one of the glazes I have with me today is the SM. SM10 clear satin. I'm not using it at the moment, but um, it is one of the glazes I have on hand today. And um, uh, I have not had a problem with it going shiny. Now, the, the satin matte glazes are not true mattes. They are satin. Uh, they're not going to be a dry matte. They're going to be more of a, uh, more of a silky uh, surface. So uh, not dry mats. But I have not had a problem with them going shiny. I don't know how high you might be firing them, uh, but I, I do not know. Now if you're using the HF 12 clear satin, 
that one uh, is a little different. It is more reactive, and so it will do things depending on your clay body, if you have uh, stains or anything with it, it'll be different. There's one loose coat on my bookend. I am going to glaze the back of it. So I flick glaze all over the place. Uh, Heather asks, um, what's a good running glaze that's bright in color, cone 5, 6? Uh, the brightest, well, the running glazes like aventurine, black aventurine, seaweed, palladium, which is not food safe, don't use that on food surfaces. Uh, none of them are super bright, however, uh, the brightest ones are the are relatively new. Blue Lagoon, Emerald Falls, and River Rock are somewhat runny. Uh, they're all pretty much the same base, and they're brighter colors than those others. So you could try Blue Lagoon or, or Emerald Falls, and they are pretty clear colors and fairly fluid. So there's one bookend done. Of course, now I'm like, how do I, how do I handle this? Missed a couple spots. Those of you who know celadons are probably like, oh my God, it's so uneven. Kara, what are you doing? You're just kind of globbing that on. Uh, I am going to layer, so I'm not too worried about the application there. I froze. Uh oh, I hope I'm not freezing. Um, Deborah asks, will there be a substitution for Temaku? Deborah, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, PC30 Temaku has not been discontinued. So I don't know why there would need to be a substitution for it. Uh, PC50 Shino has been discontinued, PC60 Salt Buff has, but Temaku is not discontinued. Uh, Sandra, so you're using the HF12 Clear Satin over velvet underglazes and that actually I can understand why you're getting some glossy like I said HF12 clear satin is reactive and it will go kind of uh, uh, more gloss depending on what you're combining it with I would recommend that you switch to the SM10 clear satin instead of the HF12 clear satin. Uh, it is a much more reliable uh, uh, clear satin glaze. And uh, if you see on our, our um, uh, clear glaze decision tree, it is what I recommend for using with velvet under glazes. Because the, uh, the HF12 can cause some strange things to happen. Heather, thank you I, I, for the compliment on the bookends. I had a lot of fun making them. I'm probably, after I get these finally glazed, I'll probably make some more. I certainly like the idea. I know a lot of people don't use bookends as much anymore. I'm not sure. It seems to be Un, less common to see bookends for sale or being made, but I I do use bookends in my in my house because I have a billion books and. Uh, I 
idea of making them fun is just too exciting. Oh, a dry temaku? Uh, Deborah, I, at this point, that's a question for all of the PC glazes. Uh, since all of the PC dry dipping have been uh, discontinued, uh, I do not know exactly what plans we have in place for their uh, replacement. I know there are plans. I do not know exactly what or when. So I cannot say about Temaku specifically. Uh, So Beth is asking, says some of the purple velvets call for uh, a low fire glaze over them and Beth wants to use cone five. Are they going to run? Uh, Beth, the velvets will not run. However, some of the velvet colors uh, and purples are susceptible to this some of the velvet colors will fade and lose their their purple at cone five so what i recommend you do is go to our website which is amaco a m a c o amaco.com and go to underglazes go to velvets and on the velvet landing page you will see uh, as you scroll down, there is a downloadable PDF that will show all of, or at least most of, the velvet underglazes. And they are shown with and without a clear glaze at cone 05, cone 5, and cone 10. And from that, you can, you can ascertain which which velvet, uh, which purples will hold up their color at cone five. And those are shown, the cone five are the middle tiles and they are shown half unglazed and half with HF9. So that um, you can, uh, you can choose which purple. My personal favorite is amethyst. Velvet amethyst holds up, in my opinion, better than most at cone five. But uh, uh, do, do check that out and you can make a, an informed decision. I'm trying to get the brush to go into the shoulder, get some glaze on there. Definitely this is easier if I pour it. As I said, I didn't have any glaze ready this morning that was the right consistency for pouring because it needs to be a little bit thinner than what I normally brush on. Otherwise, you get too much glaze on there and it could crawl. And just be a just be a pain. You like amethyst too? Yes, it is. Amethyst is a beautiful color. Uh, yes, on the packaging for the velvets, they do all say to use a low fire glaze. That's how they are uh, formulated is to work at cone 05. But we do uh, find that many of them, if not most of them, work quite well at cone five and a few even go to cone 10 very, very nicely. So it is, uh, it is one of the, one of the great things about the velvets is that they have such a, uh, a versatile nature. So as I'm putting on this second coat, I'm getting it more even, kind of going back and forth as I spread it. But as I said, I will be layering glazes, so I'm not too concerned about getting it perfectly smooth. Any inconsistency will be hidden by the top glaze. And one of the things, as I, I say this frequently, but just a reminder, 
One of the things I really love about the celadons is how stable they are. They make a great base for more uh, spectacular glaze effects, but I can take it right down to the bottom and I do not have to worry about the celadons running. As long as it's not touching the bottom, dripping off the edge when it's raw, they will stay right where I put them, isn't it? And I know that that is really a selling point for lots of people. So wow, that was a lot of questions up front and now I'm now I'm out of questions. So to go back to what Deborah was asking about the, the dry glazes, a reminder, yes, all of the PC, that's Potter's Choice, all of the Potter's Choice dry dipping glazes have been discontinued. Uh, however, the Celadon dry dipping glazes are still in production. So if you like the Celadon dry dipping, that is still available. Uh, and we do have plans for an improved product. This is where I always get stuck. How do I move it? So I'm going to scooch that over to the side and clean my hands off so I can show you guys. I, somebody was asking a while ago, and I did not have it ready to show at that point how the berry bowl came out that I glazed, I guess it's a couple months ago now. So this is my berry bowl and this is Celadon fog and as you can see just perfectly clean line right there. Not a single hole is clogged and then textured turquoise in a band around the top. Came out perfect. I love it. Beautiful. Um, Rachel is asking about the black underglazes. Jet black or velvet black flux slightly at cone six and stick to shelves and ultra black. So Rachel, uh, jet black will flux and will stick to kiln shelves at cone six, uh, definitely. Um, when it comes to velour black, it will not stick all the way up to cone 10. However, we have had people experience velour black sticking at cone six when it was a very, very heavy piece. So the weight can actually push the underglaze uh, and, and enc encourage it to stick. So if you have a very heavy piece, I recommend not using an underglaze on the foot. Uh, as for ultra black, um, ultra black does not flux or stick to the shelf at cone six, uh, and it's better behaved with clear glazes at cone six and up. So uh, if you're using it for a variety of things, you wanna have a black that does not move, does not flux, does not stick, but also uh, behaves really well with glazes and you won't have to worry about uh, pinholing with uh, a clear glaze. I do highly recommend Ultra Black. I've switched to using it for almost everything in our studio instead of Velour Black, which was my previous favorite. Yeah, it does get a little confusing that we have multiple black underglazes, but they all have their advantages. So, move this out of the way we're not talking about the clear satin. You'll also notice that the, the celadons dry pretty quickly 
So I'm able to get um, one piece completely glazed, and in that time, the other piece is dry. And for those people who get, so I in normally in the studio, I'm glazing multiple pieces. I'm not glazing one or two things. I might be glazing four or five. And to keep track of my coats, I make a mark, like a little hatch mark like that, either on the table or um, on a piece of paper, as I frequently glaze on a, uh, a paper towel. I realize that it's not the most uh, ecological way, but it also keeps me from uh, using up water to clean constantly. So. so this is two coats of the Celadon, and I'm using Celadon 29 Deep C. I really love this color. It has almost a, a denim kind of tone to it, like an indigo. Softer than the cobalt, but just a nice color. So that's two coats on both of these. I have my two hatch marks. And I'm going to let these dry a little bit. And I'm going to let you all go today. Next week, I will be back on Tuesday. So uh, Tuesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And I think I will be discussing our changes to our wax that have happened. So if you will join me then, I should have this done and glazed and I'll share with you how it came out. I, oh, I will let you know what I'm planning on layering on here is seaweed, one of my favorites for using with uh, celadons. Very, very runny. So uh, I will have that to share with you next week, and hopefully these turn out pretty. And uh, in the meantime, have a good week, and happy glazing.